Welcome to the Northampton City Council meeting of uh, September 19th, 2013. I'm City Council President Bill Dwight and I'll be presiding. Uh, before we start, I'd, I'd like to take a moment and note with sadness the passing of Ray Ellerbrook, uh, who was essentially a Northampton institution and one of our Dead. ideal students, uh, citizens. Uh, Ray's contributions to Northampton are, are incalculable and so is the enormity of our, of our loss and the loss of his family. And our condolences to his family, and I'm confident I speak for everyone here that our gratitude as well as uh, for his selfless devotion to our community. Yes, Ray Ray died uh, yesterday. So, um, and thank you, uh, thank you for that moment. Um, the what we do in the council meeting is uh, before we convene in regular session, we have public comment. And uh, the public is invited to speak on any topic. Um, hopefully it's germane, but it doesn't have to be. Um, and you're allotted three minutes for, for um, time to speak, and we ask that you honor that. We, you're not going to be shut off dead at, at three minutes exactly, but please don't start on your next page or your next paragraph. Just complete your thought. That'd be appreciated. Um, when you step up, I'm going to call your name if you've signed up, and then uh, announce, uh, tell us your name and tell us your address, and then speak your piece. And first up, we have Ann White. Good, e good evening. My name is Ann White. I live at 33 Northern Avenue, and I'm the Development Director uh, for ServiceNet here in Northampton. And I'm here to talk to you about a wonderful day in the city called Shelter Sunday. We're in our 22nd year. This year it's on October 6th and it's in Pulaski Park from uh, 10 to 4. Uh, and it's uh, run by the Shelter Sunday Coalition, which is comprised of members of each of the six agencies that benefit uh, from the money raised. Last year, we raised over $50,000 uh, with a couple of over 100 community volunteers that come together on that day and canvas um, the streets um, and get fantastic donation and wonderful response because there's you know such good publicity beforehand, letting people know that you can arrive at their door, um, and the money goes to such a worthy cause. Uh, the six uh, agencies that benefit are the Grove Street Inn, the Interfaith Shelter, uh, the SRO project here in town, Grace House, and um, Safe pa um, Safe Passage. And uh, they go to essential emergency services, homeless shelter services, and um, temporary um, and emergency housing services. So what I'm encouraging everyone here tonight is to see how they would like to participate, uh, how they can participate, whether it's just um, making a donation with one of our easy donating packets with the envelope included and the detached um, donation form or whether they'd be willing to canvas in their neighborhood or um, just talk it up at the office or pass out um, these pamphlets to people that they know. Uh, so I'm hoping that you'll all participate. It really is a wonderful experience. It's a, been a wonderful experience for me to be part of this collaborative committee um, and I'm looking forward to a very successful year in our 22nd year. So I'd like to pass out um, brochures for anyone who doesn't have one, and uh, give Gene his date change. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, thank you Ann. Nice. Uh, next up, Amy Bookbinder, please. The bad news for me is that I'm still recuperating from a bad back injury a week and a half ago. Probably shouldn't be here, but say lovey. Uh, the good news for you, however, is that tonight my remarks will therefore be brief. I learned this afternoon that Officer Borowski may be confirmed tonight as Lieutenant of the Northampton Police Department. My remarks about that are not meant in any way to be personal. I don't know him. He may be a very nice person. However, Office Borowski 
is the Northampton Police Department officer who pepper sprayed Jonas Correa in the face, a young man of color, that awful night at Tully's Bar, when Jonas did nothing but videotape an incident taking place there. Tully's, as we know, has since been censured by the city for repeated bad behavior. We know the DA dropped criminal charges against Korea, finding no cause for them, though the NPD is still pursuing civil charges. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, I applaud Councillor Adams and others on the council for hearing the concerns of Justice for Jonas, the NAACP, the ACLU, and other members of the community about Jonas's violent arrest, and for uh, initiating city council discussions with the NPD about its protocols for use of force. Given all of the above, I request a no vote on confirming Officer Borowski as lieutenant of our police department. When many in the community think his actions require further investigation with a possible demotion, not a promotion at this time. To promote this officer tonight would be a shameful action by this council, I believe, and one that I hope will not occur. In closing, again, my remarks are not at all personal. They're made in the interest of keeping all of us here in this community safe by acknowledging and applauding our city's responsible policing and not condoning unsafe policing. Thank you. I'm going to uh, break protocol here a little bit just to point out that we are not voting on any promotions we don't the council does not have the authority over any administrative agencies in the city so we won't be voting on these. this is a ceremony to acknowledge uh, the promotions and the achievements of police officers in the line of duty just to, for clarification next up is uh, Vera Cage please Hi, my name is Vera Cage from 12 Longmeadow Drive, Amherst, Mass, apartment number 21. I am probably one or the only person of color perhaps in this room. And I just wanted to state that for the record. And I'm here on behalf of um, Justice for Jonas. And I wasn't sure I was going to speak. I think I wanted to observe the ceremony, the swearing in. Um, I am also delighted to know that um, a longtime social justice activist is getting honored today, um, but it's bittersweet because it's also a day where um, the police officer who did pepper spray an innocent civilian um, will also be sworn in and, and as, as lieutenant, you know, a promotion. Um, I, I came to the United States in 1980 when I was six years old, and I think I've been fighting for social justice ever since. And I majored in sociology at the University of Massachusetts because I wanted to know why things are the way they are. And um, today, September 19th, 2013, I wanted to observe why change is so slow, why, you know, um, progress takes time. And I guess I, I want to thank the uh, folks that have stood by me, that have supported me, and, um, and others like me um, to have the courage to speak up and to speak out. Because I do live in Amherst, and I come frequently to Northampton, but now I'm going I'm to second guess coming because I don't know how a community can just gloss over the fact that an injustice has been done. Yes, it's to one individual, but it's a pattern. It's beyond Jonas. It's more than Jonas. So 
I just want to speak to that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Elliot Fratkin, please. Good evening. Uh, I'm Elliot Fratkin of 24 Massasoit Street in Northampton. And I just want to say what a great honor it is to be here with Archie Markham and for our Archie to be here with us. Archie celebrated her 98th birthday on June 21st. And we are very pleased with the proclamation honoring Archie's social activism or political commitment to our community, where she's been a resident since 1971 uh, by the mayor, the Human Rights Commission, and the City Council. This Saturday, we're honoring Archie with a celebration at Smith College Conference Center at 4.30 to 7. We invite everyone to, to attend. And part of our uh, purpose is to raise funds for the Markham Nathan Fund for Social Justice, which was founded by Archie and Marty Nathan, and gives small grants to social activist groups uh, in the community. And I just want to say, in addition to the hoopla justly congratulating Archie, and express my own feelings that Arky is a wonderful person, a very loving person, and a very smart person. And I'm just very happy that she's able to be here with us for this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Carol Reinhardt, please. Good evening. I'm Carol Reinhardt, and I live at 105 Black Birch Trail in Florence. And I'm co-chair of the uh, Northampton Human Rights Commission. So I simply want to say a simple word in the commission's support for the proclamation that uh, is to be read this evening, declaring September 21st Archie Markham Day. You know, we go by the uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which begins with the recognition that the inherent dignity and equal and inalienable rights of all members of the human family that is the foundation of freedom, justice, and peace in the world. And that sums up, I think, the motivations and the choices that Archie Markham has made in her near century of life and work on this planet, and so much of that in the uh, city of Northampton. Uh, such a role model is dearly important always to us something important, a rare gift that is for us, for our children, as a representative of the kind of life that we each, in our own ways, <coughs> aspire to achieve, I think. And that Arky has, uh, you know, she's done this in a humble way, um, not someone who chose what she does or did uh, to be um, recognized. And yet I give thanks that people like Archie Markham offer their strong shoulders on which the rest of us can stand. Thank you for honoring Archie tonight. Thank you. That's all who signed up. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak at this time? Thank you very much. Um, I'll clap, uh, let's see, I'll have the clerk call the roll, please. And Bean. Here. Present. Here. 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 Now, in uh, the order of business, the aforementioned Archie Markham proclamation. This is the mayor's proclamation, so I'm going to ask the mayor to read this and present this to Archie. There you go. Well, there you go. <laughs> Good evening, counselors. Um, uh, tonight I do indeed have a proclamation that I am issuing, um, and it is entitled Archie Markham Day, September 21st, 2013. Whereas Archie Markham has worked to protect and promote the human rights of vulnerable people throughout her career as a master's level social worker, and whereas Archie Markham provided services to war veterans throughout her social work career, and whereas Archie Markham has been politically active throughout her life, including marching against the Korean War and the execution of the Rosenbergs, as well as working with anti-war groups in Northampton, demonstrating against nuclear weapons, and promoting single-payer health care. 
And whereas Archie Markham has volunteered with many local social justice organizations, including the American Friends Services Service Committee, where she was a co-organizer and chief fundraiser for the first Martin Luther King celebration in our city. And whereas Archie Markham has co-founded Social Workers for Peace and Justice, co-founded Franklin Hampshire Healthcare Coalition, which later helped to form Mass Care, a statewide organization that continues to advocate for single-payer health care, co-founded the Middle East Peace Coalition in 1987, helped to create the Northampton Bill of Rights Defense Committee and the Alliance for Peace and Justice, created with Marty Nathan the Markham Nathan Fund for Social Justice to fund grassroots organizations that push for social justice. And whereas Archie Markham has been named Democrat of the Year and been honored by the National Priorities Project, the Massachusetts American Civil Liberties Union, and Mass Care for unwavering social justice work. And whereas Archie Markham's friends and colleagues are gathered today to honor her life's work that have been dedicated to championing human rights. Now, therefore, I, Mayor David Narkowitz, do hereby proclaim September 21st, 2013, to be Archie Markham Day in the city of Northampton. Let us celebrate her 98th birthday and honor her lifetime of activism for social justice. In witness whereof, I have set my hand and imprinted the city seal this 19th day of September, Mayor David J. Narkowitz. So it's a great privilege to issue this proclamation and end. Wow. <laughs> well, this is just wonderful. And by the way, it's uh, not my birthday. No. <laughs> <laughs> my birthday is June 21st. And I was born in 1915. That's thousands of years ago. <laughs> uh, but here I am. <clears throat> and I can't tell you how pleased I am to be part of this wonderful, wonderful city. And um, anyway, thank you very much. This was just wonderful. Uh, thank you, Art. I wish my mother and father were here. They would be so proud. <laughs> <laughs> thank you again. Thank you. Uh, th and thank you, Archie, and I'm, I'm sorry about the chairs. Uh, actually, I apologize to everyone in the room about the chairs. Fair enough. Uh, next up, um, we have, we, now we have the swearing in of police officers and departmental awards, so I imagine there's a small crowd outside. Chief, you're here? More than a small crowd, Mr. President. Okay. So give us a few minutes to assemble gather the involved officers and family if i could sing i'd fill in that's no, you fine don't want or you don't need to sing that we think uh -huh. we're all grateful for the opportunity but <laughs> just say, to say <laughs> yeah say poetry uh, we've heard you sing i mean i've never i've never heard of that, but <laughs> we gonna be able to fit everybody in you think Probably not, but we're going to try. Okay. All right. You guys are welcome to move up front, too, if you want. And the, there's there's some chairs and stuff. Fill in because there's a lot of people behind you. It's fine. We're about near the occupation oxygen occupation capacity here so Don't if we're, everyone apart. starts feeling oh, lightheaded here we're all set yeah okay hold your breath as much as you can very helpful <laughs> more seats up here <clears throat> family Family and friends, there's more seats up here if you want to fill in, which is great. Where'd you guys find parking? Oh, that's right. 
<laughs> you have a garage. <laughs> we have this clown bus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Some seats up here. This is some you get to sit next to the mayor. <laughs> fill in, fill in. That's it. All right. Those are slowly squeezing in. Thank you all. Uh, for giving us this opportunity not only to introduce you to some new supervisors of the department, but to do our annual awards. Um, you know, it's a department I'm very proud of. There's so many things that happen uh, that our officers get involved in. Our um, awards process is a peer uh, recommended process. Some of the awards get recommended for a higher level, and it seems because of the modesty of so many of my people, they always knock them down a notch. Uh, but it's important that they get the recognition that they do. Um, it's also an opportunity for just over a year after we've occupied our building uh, for me to again express my thanks not only to the City Council, the Mayor, um, and the citizens that are watching tonight. Uh, it's just a world of difference that we've been working in in the past uh, 13 months. And it's my appreciation and the opportunity for my officers, I believe, that would give the citizens and the Council a big round of applause for the building that we're in. It's worked out so well, so thank you so much. So first, let me just start by saying there's been some uh, uh, supervisor changes in the department. Detective Lieutenant Ken Watson, who's been here before in front of you, uh, chose to retire earlier uh, this year. He announced it in January and left in June. And as part of the reorganization, uh, Lieutenant Jody Casper, um, who was a 15-year veteran of the police department, who worked as a patrol officer, a field training officer, and a detective prior to being promoted to sergeant in 2007. She was promoted to lieutenant in 2011 and with the retirement of Ken Watson has been chosen to replace him as a detective lieutenant in charge of the bureau. Lieutenant Casper has two master's degrees both from Westfield State, criminal justice and public administration. She is currently an adjunct faculty member at Elms College in Chicopee. She has received numerous awards and commendations from the department. Lieutenant Casper has represented the department in lecturing and various criminal investigative matters for a number of agencies throughout the region and has been published nationally in several criminal justice articles in various law enforcement agencies, uh, magazines. So while this isn't technically a promotion that needs to be sworn in, it's your opportunity to meet the new face of the Detective Bureau, Lieutenant Jody Casper. And if you'd like to say a few words and shake the hands of the city council, you're more than welcome. <laughs> There's a lot of us here. so. I just want to say thank you very much. Thank you, of course, for the new beautiful building that it's my privilege to work in. It's been a privilege to work for the city so far, and I'm looking forward to the rest of my career with Northampton. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Jody. The next is a swearing in. Lieutenant Alan Borowski is a 15 year veteran of the department. He spent nearly six years in the detective bureau as a general investigator. Prior to his selection as a detective, he was certified patrol field training officer for two years. He was promoted to sergeant in 2010, where he's a field training and evaluation program supervisor. Lieutenant Borowski has an associate's degree from Hoyle Community College and a bachelor's degree from Curry College, both in criminal justice. He has received numerous letters of thanks from the public, as well as several departmental awards and commendations. He is currently assigned to the shift commander for the 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. shift, and this is a swearing in. This is an appointment of the mayor and the clerk, if you'd like to step up, mm -hmm. set up wherever you need to. Lieutenant? You want to take a picture? Yeah, I'll get up and take a picture. Just <laughs> family friendly event here. <laughs> his mom's Can you here. I, Alan C. Borowski. I, Alan C. Borowski. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. To faithfully and impartially. To faithfully and impartially. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of lieutenant in the Northampton Police Department. Of lieutenant in the Northampton Police Department. In accordance with the rules and laws of the Police Department. In accordance with the rules and laws of the Police Department. The Constitution of this Commonwealth. The Constitution of this Commonwealth. And the ordinances of the City of Northampton. And the ordinances of the City of Northampton. 
To the best of my knowledge and ability. To the best of my knowledge and ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Video would have been for around a campfire. <laughs> oh, now we need a few mo more moments here to. Did Scott bring his stuff? Oh, okay. we got two right. boxes. Right. <laughs> okay. As I said earlier, the awards are uh, peer-reviewed, peer-recommended, um, and we don't take the awards lightly. We don't issue these awards immediately after events. We wait to make sure that they're successful prosecutions, um, and some of those involve that. So some of these seem like they're from the past, but we're finally at a point of closure for uh, many, and the, the final one that we will go through uh, will make sense to you. So for 2012, the Certificate of Commendation Detective Timothy Sitkowski, Detective Corey Robinson, Detective Michael Briggs, uh, Staff Sergeant John Carlidge, Sergeant Alan Borowski, sorry, Lieutenant Alan Borowski, Officer David Netto, Officer Donald Nichols, Officer Thomas Briata, and Officer Brent Ziallo. If they're all lined up there, I can't, I don't have eyes in the back of my head, unfortunately, but. On February 2nd, 2012, officers responded to the Florence Savings Bank for a bank alarm. While well, en route, officers were notified that the bank had actually been robbed. Through a combined investigation effort between the patrol division and the detective bureau, the suspects were identified and su subsequently taken into custody. All the involved officers are thus being awarded a certificate of commendation. And again, if we can hand those out individually, Captain. Hello. And you make sure the hands of the city councilors. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. 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 Thank Buddy. <laughs> How are you? This is a letter of merit, Lieutenant Casper and Lieutenant Borowski. I got to edit this as I go along here. As you know, we built a new facility. We designed a room in for physical fitness equipment. Uh, we didn't have the money to actually put the equipment in. So during their off-duty time, uh, both Casper and Borowski took the initiative to create a fitness room in the new police station by organizing fundraisers, gathering donations, designing, and eventually equipping the fitness room. And it's really a, a nice facility for all the officers to work out in. So this letter of merit recognizes each of you, Lieutenant Casper, Lieutenant Borowski, for your dedication to the department and its employees. And it does get a lot of good use. Oh, I see you again. <laughs> I mean, in all honesty, they parlayed, I think, about $10,000 in donations, went to bankruptcy sales at other fitness places, got $30,000 worth of equipment. It's just donations from uh, some of our local uh, fitness centers, so it was a really good effort on their part. This is a certificate of commendation for officers Carney, Dumas, Letzison, and Morgan, and Sergeant Caputo. And I'll read this as they come up. On July 17, 2012, these officers responded to Meadowbrook Apartments for a report of a female who had been stabbed and for a male who was attempting to start the apartment on fire. Upon arrival, they found the male suspect was still armed, with, armed and had locked himself inside a bedroom. Using verbal commands in their training, they were able to get the male suspect to exit the bedroom and the officers were then able to place him into custody. Both the suspect and the female victim were rendered medical aid prior to medical personnel arriving on scene. Their actions that evening prevented further injury to the victim as well as other residents living in the building with the aforementioned fire that was started. 
Therefore, they are being awarded a certificate of commendation. Chris Dumas. a certificate of commendation for Detective Robinson. Uh, Detective Robinson's investigation to the Walgreen pharmacy robberies, two of which occurred in Florence, uh, expanded up into Franklin County and down to Hamden County. Corey was diligent about chasing down as much information as he could. And as a result, he was able to gather evidence in other jurisdictions and assisted them in solving several other similar type robberies, oxycodone robberies out of pharmacies, both in Agawam, West Springfield, Greenfield, I can't remember the other one, Springfield, Agawam, keep going. That's it. That's it? Okay. In <laughs> um, other jurisdictions, as well as recovery of evidence, and Hadley, <laughs> involved in all the cases. Uh, it was really a lot of work that he did. He helped a lot of other agencies out. So, therefore, he is being awarded the certificate of commendation for his relentless and outstanding efforts in these investigations. Don't go too far, <laughs> and I forgot. I should have done these together. This is also a letter of commendation for Detective Robinson. Um, Corey is one of our two um, internet uh, I ITAC. Okay. ITAC. Uh, can't remember the acronym. There's so many acronyms in our business nowadays. But basically, he does spend time with another uh, Detective Moody on the internet, um, chasing down, looking at sexual exploitation, child abuse uh, victims and has had a fair amount of success in that. He's also a resource based on his knowledge and Moody's knowledge as well as the fact that we were able to leverage a, a fairly substantial grant from the federal government that has a, a pretty substantial forensic unit in the police department. Um, we're used by other departments. We actually, when DEA and ATF has something they need right away, we can turn around quicker, Corey can turn around quicker than uh, the FBI crime lab. So they come up and use our resources as well. So for his continued expertise in computer forensic work and his tireless efforts conducting the sex offender audits, which is another part of his job uh, that Sergeant McMahon also uh, is responsible for, we have to go out and check all the sex registered sex offenders, the 160 some odd, Correct. give or take a few, um, in Northampton to confirm that their, their information is valid. Um, we're required to do it by the state and funded by the state to do that, but we feel it's very important to conduct those. So Sergeant McMahon does that work, Corey does that work. Um, but nonetheless, Sergeant McMahon wrote a letter of recommendation for Detective Robinson, and that's his uh, further award tonight. And I think we don't have to go through <laughs> handshaking. <laughs> well, 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 shaking his hand before, everything's good. Right. Yeah, yeah. good. Good work, Corey. So certificate of commendation, Sergeant Borowski, officers Margay, Cole, Sotolato, Letzison, Golik, Granitsis, and Detective Sitkowski. This is on November 13th, 2012. These officers responded to serve a Section 12 on a male. The male eventually armed himself with a spear and then barricaded himself in a room. Using verbal commands in their training, plus their defensive tactics, the officers were able to take the male in custody, preventing injury to the male and themselves. Due to all their actions that day, they are each being awarded a certificate of commendation. Again, it's a certificate of commendation. Officers Gregory, Demetrian, Lebrun, 
And dispatchers Gilbert and Cronin. <laughs> this is called November 16, 2012. These officers responded to domestic disturbance uh, where several individuals reported to be armed with weapons. Upon arrival, it was discovered that an individual was on the third floor and was possibly armed with a rifle. The scene was secured by these officers and the perimeter was maintained. Through the investigation, the officers were able to determine who the aggressor was, and they eventually took that party into custody without further incident. The dispatcher's involvement, while on scene, the officers advised the dispatchers that there was possibly an armed individual on the third floor. The dispatchers were able to do the research and make phone contact with this male, and eventually helped the officers to convince him to put down the weapon he had possession of and turn himself into officers on the scene. So their actions combined, dispatchers and police, uh, that night prevented further injury to all involved, including the officers on scene. As a result, both dispatchers and the officers are being recognized with a certificate of commendation. Will LeBron? Nick Dimitri? Uh, Scott Gregory? Dispatchers here, Gilbert and Cromer. Are they working? They must be working. The dispatchers are working tonight. Um, we can pull the officers off the street, but we can't take the call takers out of the dispatch center, which is unfortunate because the dispatch does so much work so greatly working with our officers, uh, the things that they deal with on the phone, the communications that they put forward to the officers on the street, the relationship that my officers and the dispatchers have, there's, it's just uncanny and, and well appreciated to, to everybody. So, This is a Meritorious Service Award, Officer Cole. On December 21st, 2012, Officer Cole was involved in an off-duty incident on his way home from work in Hoyoke where he came upon a motor vehicle accident. The vehicle eventually caught on fire with three individuals trapped inside. Without concern for his own personal safety, Officer Cole was able to extricate one of the occupants prior to the arrival of any other emergency response. Once assistance did arrive, Officer Cole continued to assist with the extrication of the other passengers. Due to his actions that evening, Officer Cole is hereby awarded the Meritorious Service Medal. This is the final award. It's a unit citation award for the following dispatchers Megan Connor, Kelly Woods, Nina Barsh. That's all I forgot one. Okay, I did skip one. Reset. Meritorious Service Award, Officers Sotolodo and Margay. On May 23, 2012, Officers Margay and Sotolodo responded to Florence Heights for a suicidal female who was armed with a knife. The female held the knife to her own throat several times during the protracted incident. Through verbal commands and their training, they were able to convince the female to eventually put the knife down, preventing injury to the suicidal female and to themselves. Due to those actions that evening, they are being awarded the Meritorious Service Medal. So, Officers Sotolodo and Margay. Get a catch in my throat, that's, you'll understand why. <coughs> this is a unit citation award for the following. Dispatchers Megan O'Connor, Kelly Woods, Nina Barsh, Melissa Nazaro, who's now the uh, supervisor of dispatch in Springfield, and Christine Wojtka, who uh, I don't know where she's working, but she was working that night. Supervisors Ann McMahon, Dorothy Clayton, John Cartilage, uh, Andrew Tushaw, who's retired, and retired Lieutenant Richard Rogowski, who came here tonight. Uh, and I haven't seen him in a while, so it's nice to see his face. Officers Christian Edler, Justin Hooten, Kenneth Kirchner, Joshua Wallace, Robert Moriarty, Donald Nichols, Joseph Barsh, Gregory Hennick, Paul Wigmore, who traveled uh, from his 
new job in Central Mass. And Brian D'Amico. Detectives Corey Robinson, Craig Kerouac, Alan Borowski, and Deidre Yasutomo, who also has left the department. And the crime scene services, David Callahan, David Netto, and Timothy Sitkowski. And Gregory Hennick. I'm sorry, did I read his name? Because he also traveled. He was changing in the parking lot when I pulled in, so <laughs> don't ask me about that. <clears throat> On December 27, 2009, one of the darkest nights in Northampton, um, we suffered a rash of suspicious fires that were later determined to be intentionally set, resulting in not only thousands of dollars in property loss, but the tragic loss of two lives. From the dispatchers fielding the multitude of calls and the dispatching of the police and the fire units to the responding officers and subsequent lengthy follow-up of both supervisory officers and detectives. And it was a lengthy protracted investigation. We had concerns about the security of the city. We had surveillance. We were, it's unbelievable the things that people did hour after hour after hour over several, several days. But the cohesive and professional work of all involved was both noteworthy and commendable. The end result of this investigation, culminating in a successful prosecution and conviction of the suspect early this year. So therefore, in recognition, all these individuals before you are hereby awarded the Northampton Police Department Unit Citation Award. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Christine Boykoff. Thanks a lot. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thanks, bud. Thank you. Thank you. So what are you doing? Do you no. No. <laughs> Thank you. You'll see Greg traveled a long way just for this. Mm -hmm. Sorry. P-Town. Donald <laughs> Nichols. Oh, yeah. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Joshua Wallace. How's it going, buddy? Good. Thanks. Kenneth Kirchner. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Jesse said you'll have to carry all of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your mom's here. You're all set. <laughs> How's it going? Nice to see you, bud. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Good job. Did you bring your whole truck over here? <laughs> nice job. Thank you. Thank you. 
Justin Hoover. Thanks again. Thank you. Big how's it going? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you look better. Yeah. <laughs> nice job. <laughs> nice job. Thanks a lot. So before closing, that's the awards that we are presenting here tonight. I will also note that uh, several officers received Hampshire County EMS uh, life-saving awards. They included Detective Peter Fapiano, Officers Andrew Cole, Thomas Briata, Adam uh, Van Buskirk, and Joshua Wallace. So again, thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to show you the faces of our new people. You see the officers and all the good work that they do, um, and the fact uh, that they know that you appreciate that uh, means the world to them. So thank you all. Well, we we uh, very much. We, we appreciate the opportunity for this exchange. And it, it also reminds us of what it is that we expect from our police officers and what they deliver to. So thank you very much. Believe me, there's far more other events that never even make the cut because they're so modest. But I was, I was listening to. Uh, the scanner last night. They're very busy. They're always busy. <laughs> so, thank you all. Have a good night. Hope you get out of here before 11. Thank you. <laughs> that was hump day. Wait till Friday night. Can we call? Jack, can we get a recess? Yeah, we, we're going to recess for a bit. Uh, let everyone. Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes to uh, recess. Thank you. I can't find my password to my. Can't find your password? Well,
Welcome back. This is the Northampton City Council meeting for September 19th, 2013. I'm City Council President Dwight. We're coming out of recess. And our next, the next item on our agenda is one minute announcements. Any councilors have uh, any announcements? Okay. Councilor Spector? I actually have a few this evening. A few? Oh, excellent. Ooh. <laughs> um, on October 1st, Tuesday, October 1st at 7 o'clock here at Council Chambers, there'll be a open public forum on the future of the roundhouse parking lot. So if you remember, this is the coming back again, the same property that a few years ago the hotel was going to be built at. And there'll be a um, presentation by a consultant who's been looking at usage of the property. I encourage people to come who are interested in that property. That's the piece affecting in the back of Pulaski Park. So that's October 1st at 7 p.m. right here in Council Chambers. Council Chambers. Also, on Wednesday, September 25th at 7 p.m. at Forbes Library, there will be a talk on titled, Our Neighbor the Black Bear, How to Keep Them and Us Safe. So that will be at Forbes Library. It's free of charge. Wednesday, February 25th at 7 p.m. And I have one more. I just filled that's, with announcements. So. Um, at the Hungry Ghost, which is on State Street across from Sirio's and State Street Market, um, there will be a parade and singing, and it will be at 11 a.m. is the parade, and then the event goes until 5 o'clock. Everyone is welcome, and the owners there wanted to thank the police because on very short notice they got a permit, and the police worked with them so that they can have this parade. So that is 11 a.m. at the Hungry Ghost Bakery. It will events will take place until five. The parades at eleven. Thank you, uh, Councilor Adams. I was reminded by Councilor Specters. Um, it has to do with Forbes Library, and they have a wine tasting on September twenty eighth from six to eight, which is a Saturday, and uh, tickets are twenty five dollars. And it's a it's a really nice event. I've been to them in the past, and I encourage everyone to go. Thank you, Councilor Tasty. Oh, you said it? Okay. Um, yeah, I have uh, the Lead Civic Association is sponsoring a uh, little picnic at the corner of Mulberry Street and Main Street on the 22nd from 4.30 to 7, so burgers and dogs and meet the neighbors. Anyone else? Okay. Let's get to work. Uh, first up is the approval minutes of September 5th, 2013. From 4.30 to 7. Move There's a motion second. to approve. Is there a second and a second? Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Thank you. Um, also, uh, notice of release. <laughs> oh, thank God. Of the executive session minutes of August 5th, August 15th, September 5th, 2013. That was approved on September 5th, um, just as pa past September 5th. So. Um, do we, and we need to vote on that? No, just a note that, that at long last, <laughs> the, the very tortured process of releasing the executive minutes has finally been done. So be sure to check them out at home. <laughs> um, and now in the reports of committee. Uh, I move one through four as a group. Second. 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 Any discussion? We have oh, there's a late file. file for the Committee on Social Services and Veterans Affairs minutes uh, from July 15th. Move okay. to approve. You, well, second. You, you want to include that in the package? I'd like to incorporate that. Well, uh, yeah, no, we I have to suspend you know, the rule. Okay. Can we just do one through four? We'll do one through four first, and then we'll, we'll deal with the late file. So, uh, any discussion on one through four? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No abstentions? Okay. Now, on the late file, this is the, uh, um, this will require a suspension. Suspend rule 38. Second. Second. All those in favor of suspending rules, except in the late file of the submission of these minutes, all please say aye. 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 Opposed? Um, and now I'll accept a motion to Move to approve. Second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Um, these are new appointments. This is um, Richard Tegilly of 21 Longfellow Drive, in Florida, term 2013, uh, uh, from September 2013 to June 2015, filling the unexpired term of Nieto, and Elaine Wheel, uh, 12 East Street, Northampton, term uh, starting at 
April 2013 and ending April 2016 and filling the expired term of Margo Well. So moved. So moved I'm abstaining. Second. Okay, so it's moved and seconded and there's yeah, and Yes, the uh, committee met with uh, both Patricia Healy and Elaine Rowell. And first of all, I want to thank Councilor Labarge for, um, and this isn't just encouraging um, any of these folks, but Councilor Labarge through the years have, has encouraged a lot of people to be on committees. And it, it didn't dawn on me until recently how, how much work she has done on that. So I would just want to thank her, and it came back this time as well. Um, we did not, you'll see that we, we are not moving Patricia Healy's name forward with a, neither recommending nor not recommending because we didn't have a quorum. Uh, <coughs> Councilor Barge abstained for that vote and there were just two of us there. We, I did interview her during that period. I would recommend her highly. I certainly would have voted to recommend. Great candidate. Uh, we did move forward Elaine Rial's uh, name. We, we were able to vote on that. And, uh, we, voted to move it forward with a recommendation. And uh, I want to thank the two of them for coming in. We had a great conversation with both of them. And Council on Aging has just gotten two great people for that committee. Council Freeman. Just to clarify, Council, they both, they both came to that yes. committee yes, meeting. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or any other discussion? Uh, yes, um, Councilor. I would like to separate the votes, please, so okay. I have the opportunity right. to vote on one. The request is separate the votes, so first we'll work on the nomination of Patricia Healy. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Abstain. And no. And then one abstention. No. And now we're voting on Elaine Reel. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions there? Both for your, uh, stepping up. We're going to recess the finance committee. Uh, Councilor Murphy is not present today, and uh, so I'll be chairing the finance committee. Uh, so we'll we're recessing and then we're convening, and I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Here. Yes. Here. First up is uh, financial order for this is to uh, this is upon the recommendation of Mayor David J. Narkowitz, the 10,000 dollars appropriated on September 16, 2010 for the Memorial Hall electrical upgrades. Project funded from the FY11 capital plan is no longer needed for that purpose and is hereby reprogrammed to be used for Memorial Hall flooring and painting upgrades. Move to approve. Second it. Okay, so this is a motion to recommend to the, the general counsel. Yep. Okay, do you want to hear from the mayor before we vote or? Yeah. I would like to rec um, recognize the mayor, please. There he is. Hi. I think I am under your rules, so. You. He's, he's perpetually recognized. And also, uh, Mr. Pomerantz is here as well. But uh, this is essentially um, some, some uh, electrical upgrades were programmed for, um, and when the monies uh, were, were uh, actually spent on the upgrades, they actually were inadvertently spent out of the central services budget itself and not out of this fund. Um, and so these funds remain there. So what we're asking to essentially reprogram them uh, to some other uh, needed repairs in Memorial Hall that would be paid for traditionally out of the O&M budget of uh, the Central Services Department. Um, there's some other additional flooring and painting upgrades that need to be done. So um, that's the reason for asking to now move this money into the regular uh, Central Services budget. So these aren't tailings left over from a job. That's correct. Yeah, and uh, Mr. Pomerantz is here. He can explain to you the work that was done as part of the upgrades if, if you need to. And actually, uh, accept a motion to recognize the Pomerantz. Accept the motion. Second. All Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, this was a capital project. We had to replace the electric service coming into the rear of Memorial Hall. Thought we were going to need uh, outside electrical contractors to do the work, and it turned out we were able to do most everything using our in house electric staff. And as the mayor explained, the materials were covered out of the uh, O M budget for central services. Um, so we just like to sort of keep that, take this money now and transfer it over for other work in Memorial Hall. But by doing it in house, we did save a lot of money that we thought we'd have to go out, and we replaced the electric service that way. That was my question. It was a cost-saving thing by doing it in-house. 
as well, yes. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. yes. So this extra money that we have is going to be used for doing what the request is, correct? Interior renovations. So we're right. talking flooring, flooring. painting, uh, probably some electrical work inside the building, um, things of that nature. Any further questions? All right, the motion's been made to recommend. Uh, Make a motion to recommend. Well, it's already been made, so oh. seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I still approve. <laughs> I know. Uh, this is upon the recommendation of Mayor J.B.J. Narkowitz, who we noticed is recognized, uh, uh, that the council authorized payment of a prior fiscal year uh, bill from FY 2013 for a boot allowance reimbursement for a DPW employee of FY 2014 funds. Uh, do you want to move approval or do you want to hear from the mayor first? But we'd like to hear. Why don't we hear from we'll the recognize the mayor. So um, this is actually a, f a similar uh, fact pattern to some previous uh, orders that we've put forward where essentially a bill has come forward um, that is an FY 2013 bill. Uh, and of course, we've now closed FY 2013. You may recall we had a bill in the assessor's office for some computer work at one of your previous meetings. And so in order now to pay this bill in FY 2014, we actually have to bring it before the council. So this is actually um, a, re a contractual uh, reimbursement of a DPW employee uh, as part of their uh, uniform and equipment allowance. Uh, they submitted it on time. It didn't get paid um, correctly by the end of the fiscal year. So we, it requires a vote of the council to actually pay this and reimburse the employee. Council Tate. How much money is this? It's uh, one, uh, 100 and I think it's $50. 150 $150, yeah, which is the, uh, again, contractual uh, amount that uh, the boot, for the boot allowance. Thank you. Yeah. Why? What? Why are we authorizing $150? Well, I'm just curious. I mean, I What's that again? We're just authorizing the payment of the bill. Right. Okay. Um, because again, it's a bill from a prior fiscal year, um, and and okay. MGL and DOR regulations require that if we're going to um, pay something that was a 2013 obligation, it actually has to come before you. I think part of the council's concern was if we were going to be voting on every boot item or that we <laughs> Not at all. No. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Are not at all. This is, uh, as you know, this is, uh, I think, we voted now on, I think, $350 out of a, you know, right. $76 million FY13 budget. Uh, so, again, these are just some issues that can occur as the close of one fiscal year into the other. Council Premier Dan, do you have a question? Did someone get booted? It, I oh. Don't know <laughs> <laughs> So said the lame duck. It booted it themselves. I see. Now we have to reimburse them. So. Okay. All, all those in favor of Excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. Councilor Tacey. We didn't have two meetings just to the council floor. Um, we could if you want. It would be helpful again. This is yeah. a request for two. an accounting issue. Okay. I just want to. And, and same with the last one, the 10,000. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Um, there's a, so actually, we haven't formally put this uh, uh, recommended. So, if you want to make it to the council, to, yeah. So you move to recommend, and you second. And okay. So all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Okay. There is a request on our financial order for two readings on. Right. That. When we get to the floor, we'll, right. we'll address that. Um, up next, a little steeper. This is. Uh, Upon the re recommendation of Mayor David J. Narco, it's ordered that the $29,000 remaining for an appropriation on November 16, 2016 for parking, painting garage stairwells from the parking receipts reserved for appropriation is no longer needed for that purpose and he is hereby reprogrammed to the parking garage waterproofing and stair repair project. Mayor or David, do you want to speak to this? I'm not sure what we do with that respect. Okay. Why don't we just I would like to recognize the mayor. Either okay. Yeah, so, well, they stand uh, recognized. So essentially, this is, again, as has happened in the past, this is a capital improvement project that the council had appropriated and authorized money for. Um, there's residual funds left over from that project uh, that was actually uh, not compl completed, and now the uh, 
uh, new department head would like to reallocate those to a more current project that is more um, in need. And I can have uh, Mr. Pomerantz explain that to you. Did you have a question, Councilor? Well, yes, I do. Because there was a, a previous sum of 331000 correct? So on that capital project that we used part of that money, all that has been completed, correct? How long ago was this project you're talking about? Seven, seven years. Well, we approved 331000 way back, when was it, in 2007? This was probably a capital plan that you approved that had a number of different projects. And this, is, uh, this was among those projects. Yeah. yeah. This, uh, the so FY 2007. Yeah. Uh, so on that order that you're referring to, that was an order on November 2nd, this one item is the stairwell painting project, which was itemized at $32,000. Okay. That's the one that... Uh, reserve those funds right. for that project and maybe you want to explain about that stairwell painting project and the more pressing project right so subsequent to that there was additional capital money allocated under the capital program for epoxy and waterproofing work um, that's our number one priority project that's going to be going on right now um, that project will be started this fall it's about six weeks in duration that project is a little bit more money than the allocated capital line uh, for the waterproofing and epoxy work. So the request before you is to take some of that other money, and that would be applied towards the total lump sum of what would be the contract when we get to it for this work this fall. There will be stair work, but not the work that was intended under that 29000 uh, Councilor Adams had a question. So the, the painting still needs to be done. It's just no longer the top priority? Exactly. There's a four-year phased pro work program that's being developed right now. So the first year is the waterproofing and epoxy work. Uh, that's our number one priority, especially with winter closing in. Years two, three, and four will include things like painting the stair rails, uh, like other remedial work, epoxy work down around where the bridge is. It goes over to Thorns. Uh, some electrical work, things like that, elevator upgrades. But the number one project and the number one need is to do the waterproofing and epoxy work, and that's what we're starting with now. And I just want to commend uh, Mr. Pomerantz because one of the things he did when we uh, uh, put the parking maintenance under uh, the, the control of central services is really go in and do a pretty in-depth look at the parking garage and reassess what the capital needs are um, and has now put together a, a four-year program that he just described of which this is uh, the one of the top projects um, and and that's a that's now a four-year maintenance schedule for the garage so that we can make sure that those items are addressed um, it's a it was a very expensive structure uh, and it needs to be taken care of properly so that we can make sure it lasts and is safe and performs. Councilor Human Davis. Just a quick question. Um, we're reprogramming 29200 but initially 32000 was allocated, so $2,800, was that, was that, was that previously tried, did we use $2,800 to paint some of the stairwells or? Uh, we didn't actually, and I and we will have to go back to that project of painting, um, uh, as as Mr. Pomerantz described. So I believe that there had been some earlier attempts uh, to to bid that painting job uh, that did not uh, were not successful, and so that's what, part of the reason why the money was never expended. Um, but for now, that's now moved further down on the priority list, and so we're now moving that ahead. Right. I, I guess. The only thing I'm wondering about is where did that $2,800 go? Mm -hmm. The $2,800 that's, that would be still sitting in that right. particular fund. Are we going to just leave it there? We're going to we're going to need to. Uh, There's only 29 left of the original. Okay, so this is the remaining money uh, in that actual allocation. I, I misspoke. So there was a, there was a small allotment uh, that had been spent for painting. Uh -huh. Okay, so that's my, that's what I said. Mike, correcting on that. Council so this will actually drain that uh, and, and cancel that out. 
Councilman Lamar. Yes, um, I'm a little concerned because we appropriated this money in 2006. Why wasn't it used, Mayor? Again, uh, uh, this, I think I was um, probably sitting there and probably voted on the appropriation as a Ward 4 counselor. Um, I can't, uh, it's difficult for me. I was not overseeing the department at that point. I don't know why that project uh, was not carried out. All I can speak about is what we've done uh, and so and since Mr. Pomerantz has stepped in uh, to really take a look at the garage, assess what has to happen, and then we looked back at some of these already programmed projects and are now trying to reprogram them to fit with the new priorities for maintaining the garage. Councilor Hasey. I actually researched it at the time when it was approved, and it's an epoxy. It's a two-part uh, paint mixture that is manufactured, I think, by the Clover Manufacturing Company in Canada. And it is a very, very quick drying epoxy. It went out to bid, I believe, twice, mm -hmm. and nobody bid on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had spoke with one of the bidders, and they weren't interested because he said it was a three-swipe brush, one, two, and it was dry, mm -hmm. and he couldn't guarantee. Mm -hmm. um, it's a difficult, it's a difficult material to use that was specked out, mm -hmm. and. Um, Anyway, I remember it pretty well. It, it, they did go out to bid, and then never got bid. Nobody, nobody yeah. submitted bids for it. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Uh, now that it is cooler, it might be. It might take longer to dry. There you go. Yep. Um, any other further discussion? Yeah. Uh, I'll accept the motion now. Please vote for recommendation. Move to approve it. Move to recommend or second. All those in favor, recommend Aye. this council. Aye. Aye. Okay. I don't know if it's noted on there, but this would be one that we would like again for two, two readings. We heard Mr. Pomerantz is trying to mm -hmm. get that work underway. So, this uh, final item is upon the recommendation of Mayor David J. Narkowitz ordered that whereas the former Vernon Street School property located at 56 Vernon Street has been in continuous use since 1977 as a facility providing full day full year Head Start and early care and education services for low and moderate income families. And whereas the continued lease of the property for the purpose of Head Start and early care and education services is an appropriate neighborhood use that provides a vital community and regional resource for low and moderate income children and their families. And whereas Mass General Law 30B, uh, Chapter 16, requires a vote of the City Council to surplus any interest in public property prior to its disposal. Now, therefore, be a resolved. The property formerly known as the Vernon Street School, located at 56 Vernon Street, is available for lease until 2023, and the City Council directs the Mayor to award and execute said lease with the following restrictions. The lessee will be responsible for maintenance and utilities and shall make a minimum capital investment of $300,000 in the building HVAC upgrades during the duration of the lease and the property can only be used for Head Start and early care and education and other related services by a 501c3 nonprofit organization. I'll accept a motion to recommend. I make the motion to recommend. Second. Seconded. Uh, Your Honor, you want to speak to this? Certainly. Um, I included in the packet a, a memorandum to the City Council, um, and I may just Go quickly go through that. Um, this is, of course, one of our former elementary schools uh, located at 65 Vernon Street. Uh, and uh, in 1977, one of my uh, predecessors, uh, uh, three mayors removed, a Northampton Mayor Harry Chapman actually executed the first lease on this property uh, to then uh, Hampshire County, uh, Hampshire Community Action Corporation, HCAC, uh, which uh, uh, began the um, activities uh, there, which have actually continued to this day, 36 years later, um, providing Head, head Start services uh, for uh, low and moderate income uh, children and families um, in Northampton and in the Valley. Um, uh, and again, that's a, uh, an arrangement that has continued through Mayor Musanti, Mayor Ford, Mayor Higgins, and, uh, and, and through my administration. Um, and so, uh, a couple of things are happening. Uh, first of all, we are at a point where we need to uh, renew that lease. Um, the building has some capital needs. The, the terms of the, of the leases that have come before this um, require that community action uh, 
main, pay for the maintenance of the building as well as utilities in the building. Um, and they um, have, have put a lot of uh, care uh, and effort into keeping a rather old building going. They've invested in uh, painting classrooms and, and uh, work on windows uh, and all kinds of other things. But there's some, a couple of major issues right now. Uh, the roof system is failing uh, and needs to be replaced, as well as the um, ancient boilers, uh, uh, our boiler. Um, which uh, is inefficient uh, and, uh, and given its age, um, we don't know how much longer it will continue to function. So Community Action has received preliminary funding approval from Head Start uh, for $200,000 in federal funding uh, to make the uh, capital investments in the building to address the roof issues. Um, they also have been working uh, with the Massachusetts Clean Energy Center um, through a special program for nonprofits that has um, it allows them to have access to approximately 125,000, which will allow them to replace the oil burner and the steam heat distribution system uh, in the building with a more modern energy efficient. Um, in order to do that, uh, they, are, they will need a longer lease period. They need a lo longer site control of the building in order to be eligible for the type of grant that would make that kind of capital investment in the building. So what I'm proposing, uh, and again, under Chapter 30B, uh, uh, I have to, we essentially have to resurplus the building and make it available. Uh, we have to do an RFP for a lease on the building. Um, and, uh, and of course, we would be structuring that RFP um, uh, to, to continue uh, the relationship that we've had with community action. Similar to what we did when we extended the lease uh, for the survival center at the city's facility on Prospect Street, similar to what we did when we, when we extended the lease uh, for the South Street School and the community music center. Um, so, uh, so what I'm proposing is that the council take that vote under 30B uh, to allow the city to award a new lease uh, through 2032, uh, which would allow access to those federal funds, uh, federal and state funds, to make the needed upgrades to the facility and to continue to keep operating uh, the programs that they operate um, in the building. We have some guests here tonight who can answer specific questions about the programs that happen there. And I, I did a summary of them uh, in my memo, uh, the early care and child, uh, early care and education, full day, full year programming, um, Head Start home base visiting program, WIC, uh, healthy families, uh, REACH program, uh, serving children with special needs, a mother woman support group for new mothers, and a YWCA supervised visitation program for separated and divorced uh, families. Um, uh, we have with us tonight an uh, Anat uh, Wiesenfund, who is the director um, uh, at the at the site. Uh, we also have Wendy Mullen, who's the business operations director uh, for community action. And we also have Barbara Black, who is the city's um, early childhood education uh, coordinator, um, who I believe submitted a memo to you uh, about the importance of this program and how it complements the work that we're doing as part of the public schools. Um, as I closed in the memo, I respectfully recommend that the city council approve my request uh, to advertise and award a new lease on the Vernon Street School facility. This proposed lease renewal would facilitate significant outside capital investment in a city-owned facility, reducing its future operating costs while increasing its current its future value. More importantly, this proposed lease renews the City of Northampton's 36-year commitment to ensuring access to Head Start and early care and education services at this facility, representing an incalculable investment in the lives and futures of disadvantaged children in our community. <coughs> so with that, I will entertain questions. Uh, again, we have guests from, uh, from Community Action. Okay, and we have, we have questions from Councilor Adams and Councilor Labarde. And okay. Um, Mayor, will the, will the maintenance and utilities be the total compensation? The, um, the, Consideration the, the leases that? that we've had in the past um, have been for a dollar a year. Uh, and so, yes, that is correct. And one of the things that um, it's important to point out about how Head Start funding works, um, Head Start agencies are required to uh, provide 20% of their funding through in-kind 
uh, contributions. And so what is co quite common, like an arrangement like this, is that this, this lease arrangement is counted towards that in-kind uh, contribution to Head Start. Um, the city of Westfield, the city of Agawam, uh, city of West Springfield, Greenfield, Amherst have similar arrangements where Head Start services operate out of uh, city or town facilities under similar arrangements. Um, and again, it's part of the Head Start. I think the, the ethos of that is trying to make sure that there's a local commitment and investment in these services, which are so vital to the community. So that would be the arrangement. That's been the arrangement. That arrangement would continue, although I have specified um, in this order uh, that in addition to that maintenance and utilities, they will be making a minimum capital investment of $300,000 in the building and its systems during the duration of the lease, uh, which again, I think is a significant uh, investment in a, in a city-owned property. Council Thank LaBarge, you. Then Council yes. James. So if I'm understanding, Mayor, of what you said, that dollar a year, that would be gone. They won't pay for that dollar. What they're going to pay for Head Start would be 200000 I think you said, in capital funds, right, to make those needed repairs. And then also another 125000 from the Massachusetts Clean Energy, correct? So that will be their full responsibility of taking care of the maintenance at Vernon Street. Is what, and again, as well as continuing to do the day-to-day -day maintenance um, on the building, as, as well as uh, paying the utilities, uh, the electricity, the um, gas, uh, or electric rather, uh, um, uh, oil, although that may be changing. Um, and, uh, and we did a, um, a site visit uh, this week uh, so that the property committee could go take a look at it. And we met with their, the folks who've been uh, taking care of the building and who maintain it. Um, and so, yes, that would continue. Um, and these investments are investments that will be made um, as part of their arrangement uh, uh, as, as leasees in the building. I've been in that building a couple of times, and the program is a wonderful program. And how anybody could ever say no to this Head Start program, it is probably one of the best in our city. They do so much for a, all kinds of diversity, and especially people with disabilities. And I'm going to support this 100%. I supported it way back. And I think it's great that they are going to go ahead and stay here in the city of Northampton. Councilor Freeman Daniels. Thank you. Uh, Mayor, you. Um Maybe you might have misspoke when you said that you were asking for the lease to go until 2032. Uh, I think I must have meant 2023. I meant a 10-year lease. That's my, yeah. that was my only Sorry, a little dyslexia there. Any other questions, Councilor Tacey? <clears throat> yeah, they've done a pretty good job of, they spent tens of thousands of dollars maintaining this building over a period of years, patching and, and everything. It's, it's a tough building to maintain. Mm -hmm. And um, the... Uh, the program is, is I think, worth more to the community than to surplus the building for sale or some such thing as that. Um, so I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to support this. Uh, but is it a dollar a year or a dollar a month? Uh, a I believe it's a dollar a year. Dollar a year. Yeah. Prorated. Okay. Or actually amortized. Spread yeah, out I was just curious as to the language, that was all. Yeah, I believe that's what it's been in the past. So, um, yeah. 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 And I would also add that uh, I had the pleasure of um, climbing up on the, the roof with uh, <laughs> Councillor Tacey and Councillor uh, uh, Dwight as part of the tour that we did to see exactly the issues that have to be replaced up there. Uh, really so we can dress avoid... Nice. Dressed pretty much like that, too. Yeah, pretty that's much, yeah. Uh, and and because, again, we're trying to protect the outer envelope of the building and prevent mold and, and infiltration and some of the other issues because they have very strict uh, standards in terms of running a, a facility that they're running. So we want to make sure that we avoid that. And one thing that is, I think, really the need of recognition is the fact that they have remained the WIC pro they remained with the WIC program or WIC has stayed there as where it's been lost uh, most everywhere else. So, I'll try it. No? Any other questions? Um, I, I just want to add that um, 
this is a legacy structure and its legacy has been education and providing for the community and this is a part of that continuum and actually as to what Councilor Tacey referred to with sequestration WIC Head Start in particular has been has been brutalized and the fact that we are still able to receive the superior services that are offered there that, that this building would continue in the way that it was originally intended by the people who built it is is carrying on a mission of providing for families and particularly families in need in this community and uh, I, I I agree with the counselors who have who have expressed their, their affirmative um, pleasure on this on this vote so with that um, we will proceed with the vote all those in favor of recommending this we'll recommend aye aye thank you and I, All right, I, I, I'm not sure if we noted it on the agenda That's or not. two readings? I was going to ask for two readings because we're, um, we're attempting to access some funds, uh, federal funds, in the new fiscal year, or I should say community action is. And we have, a third, we have to put this out for 30 days. Um, the RFP has to be out on the street for 30 days. Uh, and so I, it would be helpful to... to when it comes to the council floor, I should say. Right. And, and, and Barbara, just to let you know, we did receive your memo and read it. And thank you very right, much I for that. Just forgot to send it to you. Okay. Uh, Jean and yeah. then Marianne. I was wondering if, if we're going to keep him here for the rest of the meeting, or would you like to speak now? And uh, who's ever here from the program? Uh, uh, Barbara, Anat, you're welcome to speak if you'd like. If you want. We'll have Anat, who's kind of gilding the lily at this point, but it's yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, I, uh, uh, council members and uh, mayor, and it was really a pleasure to host you the other day. I was a little uh, trepidatious about you going up on the roof and, you know, with, you know, half your government there, but... Well, um, ultimately, it would have been our liability anyway, so you would have been... Well, you know, but I am a resident of Northampton, so <laughs> who care? Um, really, thank you very much, and I, I, I want to say that I think one of the things that a lot of people don't know is that we serve children from birth to five in that building. So we have really little babies. We have two early Head Start classrooms that serve children birth to three. We have three preschool classrooms that serve children three to five. Um, as um, Council uh, Member Dwight correctly said, uh, we just uh, had to deal with the most devastating cuts in the history of Head Start since 1965. Uh, our agency lost approximately $300,000. This year, we had to cut 129 slots throughout our service area. We laid off about 68 staff. We've been able to rehire about 48 of them uh, through a restructure in different positions. Um, so we, we are alive, and we are doing fine, and we have not compromised quality. And our site at Vernon Street is very, very dear to us. It's our only site in Northampton. We did have to close our site at the Northampton High School recently, as you may know. Um, so we are just thrilled. We are pleased that we were able to secure this money from the office of Head Start, um, having them recognize the importance of the building and of the services we provide. We, we do, I think, a lot for the very poorest of our neighbors and our communities. Uh, we serve families at 100% of the federal poverty level, which is, I think, something like $14,000 for a family of three or four annually. Um, so I really just want to thank you if you have any other questions. We, we, our Head Start program runs in three counties, but this is our main base in Hampshire County. So. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Anat. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you for the tour. Um, any other questions on finance? Can we all, I, I want Barbara, 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 do you want yeah, to say Yeah, I, I just want to, sure. Step up to the Because I can, I can never resist. <laughs> okay, where do I want to be? And Miss Pai, you're right here, fine. You're okay. right here at the So point. basically just that, um, I mean, clearly, you all of you received an article that the mayor sent you the article by James Heckman about the value of early childhood education. And I mean, you could be sick of me saying it to you because I say it to you like constantly. But he, and he said it a lot better than I could ever say it, that we have to invest in our young children and everything, listening to all of you talk tonight was just very um, affirming and inspiring and I wish the rest of the world could see <laughs> that mm -hmm. this is what we have to be doing and Head Start and you know the early childhood programs that have been there for the last 36 years 
made a huge difference. I mean, really, I was trying to calculate how many kids had been through the building, and really like thousands. Mm -hmm. um, and um, many of them are grown-ups. Many of them now have kids in our schools. And, um, and then, you know, many of the kids from Head Start come to our schools. And the fact that they've been there really helps them do better and begins to address the resource gaps that exist. So um, I'm glad that uh, we're all thinking the same thing. Well, uh, you served as an inspiration in that level, too, anyway. So thank you very much. In the um, that's it for finance, right? No? Um, actually, there's one other. Yep, there's one other item. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry to that. Uh, this is yes, that's right, and a very exciting item. Um, this is upon the recommendation of uh, Mayor David J. Narkowitz, and you guys have photos that I sent to you. This is an order that the council surpluses the following parking spaces for the use of trash disposal containers. This is the Masonic Street lot, two spaces, Armory lot, two spaces, Strong lot, two spaces. Fazano lot, one space, and make these spaces available for the lease of a five-year period, FY 2014 to FY 2019. I'll accept a motion to recommend. In finance, hello, councilors, you want to rec? I'll, I'll make a recommendation. You need to work with me. Okay, so there's a recommendation in councilor. Is there a second? Second. Second. So this is actually uh, analogous to what you just did. Uh, which is again under 30B because these parking spots are the property of the city um, and uh, in order for us to continue leasing them uh, to the folks that uh, that have dumpsters on those spots in the selected areas uh, we have to go through this procedure of the City Council affirmatively surplusing it and saying that we can put them out for lease um, folks who go to the Armory Street lot may notice these dumpsters and they help serve the city as well as businesses um, in the downtown area um, and so that's the purpose for uh, for having to come back to you um, as part of a renewal of these leases so mayor this is under a five-year contract I believe that's correct yes. yeah thank yep. you yep. Any other questions? Council, so these are leased these these are uh, arranged with the uh, with the providers and they pay the city yes they do they pay they pay <coughs> us um, for these uh, spots yes to, and to put the dumpsters there and it serves a valuable purpose particularly for many of our Main Street uh, businesses and as well as the city has access to some of them uh, as a collection point for the downtown trash collection that we that our subcontractor does you do you this isn't this you don't require an RFP for this uh, you just uh, I believe we uh, I believe the dollar amount is not no because of the dollar because it's month so, so it's just run through your office basically but it is a lease so um, effectively it's a lease it, so it is run through central services let's run through central service um, okay and uh, and so but because it's a lease it still requires uh, this vote for the council just my other question is um, my other question really re pertains to re recyclables are we uh, is part of the lease conditions that they're that the businesses are not disposing of recyclable containers don't know um, because it, have, it's it's part Mr. of the it's part of the city's ordinance that that is the case. Yeah, so we have to make sure that this yeah, is I'm happening. Have Mr. Pomerantz address that because he knows that in more detail. So we have both uh, do so at the Strong Avenue lot, and we have alternative recycling systems at the other lots. Uh, so they have compactors for cardboard related items. Uh, they have barrels for the trash itself, uh, and then there are bins or or roll of rolling dumpsters, so to speak for the recyclable materials, glass, cans, things like that. So the bid people, uh, the pedal people, uh, the parking maintenance people, and the businesses surrounding those compactors and dumpsters put their material in there, depending on which what they're dumping. All right, thank you. Uh, so I, think, I, I think your concern was that we were just putting a dumpster there and people were putting everything recycling. and everything. So there, that, does that answer your concern? Yeah. Okay. I'm just curious about whether that will have two readings on this. Is a request for two readings on this? Yeah. I, mean, there's no, I don't see why we wouldn't. Get it out. There's no, there's, I mean, it's not an Request. urgent matter, but it would, again, it's an administrative matter. These dumpsters have been there for many years. It's just we have to renew this lease every five years. So bring it up. At, at it would be helpful. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions relative to the dumpsters? 
Uh, all those in favor of recommending this to the council, please say aye. Aye. All right. That. With that, I'll accept a motion to adjourn finance. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. All right. So now we're back into the meeting. <coughs> meeting, as it were. Uh, first up is the financial order for the $10,000 Memorial Hall electrical upgrades. To go towards the Memorial Hall flooring and painting upgrades. We move to approve it. Second. Any further discussion? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, oh, oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Oh, roll call. Are we going to roll call? I'm sorry. My bad. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Tarney? Yes. Councilor Boyd? Yes. Councilor Graham and Daniel? Aye. Councilor Bard? Yes. Councilor Schwartz? Yes. 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 Second. Second it. What, we, we need that for financial order one. Uh, oh, he didn't say he wanted to second. Yeah, like, I asked. Yes. All right. Well, there's a discussion on that about the appreciation of that? Oh. Or would, no. It's a, yeah. Okay. Thank so there's a motion good, to suspend good, rule. Good that the law is going to catch up to the work. So yes. Yes. Okay. Might as well do that. Uh, all those in favor of suspending rules, please. Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? All right. I'll accept a motion. Oh, we have the motion to put it on the uh, for, I'll accept a motion. Move second reading. Oh, Thank you very much. Uh, any discussion? Roll call, please. Yes. Yes. Aye. Yes. 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 Okay, this is the uh, boot allowance reimbursement for the DPW employee. This is uh, also a request for two readings. Move to approve it. There's been a motion and another motion. I'll, I'll counsel the barge, counsel Tacey. And uh, uh, any further discussion on the boots? Roll call. It is, by the way, it's boots plural, two, two boots. There's two boots? One boot, right? I and thought there was just one boot. <laughs> Wait, okay. It's <laughs> because <laughs> it's just written in two readings for one boot. <laughs> it's one allowance. The boot is a. Roll call, please. Yes. Not the Aye. Yes. 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 Suspend rule 14. All right, this time, second. Councilor LaBarge second. Councilor Daisy was the second. Uh, any discussion on the suspension of rules? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Uh, motion for second reading. Second reading. Second. Okay. Oh, Councilors? Let's all play the same game. The, uh, uh, this is a motion to be made for second reading. Any further discussion? Yeah. I, I'm sorry. I actually really don't know what's going on here. We're now voting in second reading. Yeah, but I don't know what we're allowing. We're allowing boots. them to pay the bill. The bill for boots. Yes. It's bill, it's, it, can it's, I, can it's, I, it doesn't matter about the boot. It's just we're paying a two, an FY 2013 bill in FY 2014. Which is, yeah. requires our authorization. Yeah. Yes. What is that's a mass That's mass general law that we're required to do that. Probably so. if you didn't say anything about boots, we'd be fine. Yeah. I <laughs> Pretend it's the computer bill that you approved two weeks ago for the uh, assessor's office. I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. Safety gear. Is this okay. this is gear. This is yes. this is exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Like a steel toe, <laughs> uh, steel toe boot that someone yeah. who's working in the water or sewer okay. department or speaking with his TPC hat on, he thought it was a boot on someone's uh, car. Yeah. <laughs> we can arrange that. Councilor <laughs> <laughs> Adams. It's just that they're they're contractually obligated to pay the, the cost of the boots, right? And 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 the and the, and the, and the worker submitted it. Exactly. And it just yes. for, by oversight wasn't yes. paid, and now it's gone to the next fiscal similar to fiscal year. Which is officers you saw tonight have similar. Right allowances for uniforms and boots and, and such. Thank you. Okay, well, I think we've wrestled that to the ground and choked it to death, so I'll uh, accept a roll call. Aye. Yes. 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 Ah, yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Go forth and pay your bills. Ah, yes. <laughs> okay, um, we've 
moved beyond that controversy, and now we're up to the financial order for the reprogram of $29,200 for the parking, uh, painting of the garage, stairwells to the parking garage, waterproofing, and stain, uh, a stair repair project. Move to approve. Second. Uh, any further discussion? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Aye. Move to approve. I mean, suspend rule. Suspend rule 14. Second. Second. Okay. Any further discussion on suspension rules? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. So what happens next? Roll call. No, someone calls. Second reading. Thank you. Second reading. I'm going to get you. Uh, uh, has there been a second on that? Second. The okay. second okay. reading. Councilor Freeman did. Uh, just as a side note, I, it would be interesting to know where that $2,800 went from the initial uh, approval to now. Just we can look that up and provide Thank that information for you tomorrow. But I'm, certainly. It doesn't have to be tomorrow. Okay. Be nice we, we'd like it to be. <laughs> After we put the boot on your car. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Aye. Yes. This is, uh, and then next up is the authorization for the mayor to lease the Burns Street School property. Move to approve. Second. Uh, any further discussion? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Aye. Yes. Yes. Suspend rule 14. Second. Any discussion on the uh, suspension of rules? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. And to a second reading. Second. Second. second it. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Aye. Yes. 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 Okay, and this financial order, this is the second reading. Uh, this is the rescission of authorization of the city to borrow $535,000 for the purchase of property on Coles Meadow Road. Second it. Any further discussion on this? Roll call on this, please. Yes. 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 Aye. Yes. 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 This is also a second reading. This is the transfer of eight thousand six hundred sixty-one dollars from the FY 2014 reserve for personnel, the FY 2014 board of health permanent salaries to fund additional hours per week for the public health nurse. Second. Motion made. Seconded. Any further discussion? Um, as you recall, this is because of the agreement with Amherst no longer holds for the uh, community nurses to offset that. Um, so uh, we'll do the roll call. <laughs> yeah. I know. Yes, yeah, it's the health one. Yeah. Yeah, I went first last time. <laughs> yes. Yes. Hi. Yes. 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 This also second reading is the authorization to enter into an intermunicipal agreement with Franklin Regional Council of Governments. Second. Yes. Yes. Aye. Yes. 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 Next up is the authorization to purchase or acquire to expand uh, Broadbrook Greenway. This is also second reading. Move to move to approve. Second. Second. Any further discussion on this? Roll call, please. Oh, uh, Councilor Adams, Inspector. Ad Adams made the motion. Specter seconded. Right. Councilor Freeman Daniels. Aye. Councilor Barge. Yes. 
Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. And the last of these financial orders is that the authorization to purchase or acquire land owned by Marshall Russell. Move to approve. Second. Motions been made by Councilor Adams and seconded by Councilor Tacey and Labarge. Everyone gets credit. Oh, well, yes. I got a second. <laughs> oh, it's all right. Jeez. <laughs> She's fine. Second. Uh, any discussion on this? It's been seconded. The motion's been made. It's been seconded. Any discussion? Now, hit it. <laughs> yes. 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 Aye. Okay. Now we move into orders and ordinances. That's the uh, that's the financial orders. And coming up now, um, well, believe it or not, this is the warrant for November fifth. 2013 biennial municipal election it's on the recommendation of city clerk Wendy Mazza ordered that the biennial municipal election in the city of Northampton for the choice of municipal officers be held on Tuesday the 5th of November 2013 in the several polling places designated by the city of council as follows Ward 1 precinct A and B in Jackson Street School Auditorium Ward 2, Precincts A and B in Smith Vocational Agricultural High School Gymnasium. Uh, Ward 3, A and B in the Senior Center Great Room at 67 Conn Street. Uh, Wards 4, A and B also in the Senior Center Great Room at 67 Conn Street. Ward 5, Precinct A in Florence Civic and Business Building at 90 Park Street. Ward 5B is Smith Vocational Agricultural High School Gymnasium. <laughs> Ward 6 A and B is at the Robert K. Finn Ryan Road School. Uh, Precinct A in Ward 7 will be at John F. Kennedy Middle School and Community Room. And war, uh, Ward 7 Precinct B will be in the Lead School Gymnasium lower level. The polls will be open at 7 o'clock in the forenoon and close at 8 o'clock in the evening of the said day. And all such voters will, will, within the said hours, in the wards in which they are individually entitled to vote, give in their votes for mayor, for four ensuing municipal years, for the city clerk, for two ensuing municipal years, for two councillors at large, for the two ensuing municipal years, for one councillor from each of the seven wards of the city, for the two ensuing municipal years, for two members of the school committee at large for two years from the first Monday of January 2014, for four members of the school committee to serve for two years from the first Monday of January 2014, one to be taken from the inhabitants of Ward 1, one from the inhabitants of Ward 3, one from the inhabitants of Ward 5, and one from the inhabitants of Ward 7, for three superintendents of Smith Agricultural School to serve for two years from the first Monday of January 2014, for one elector under the Oliver Smith will for two years from the first Wednesday of May 2014, and for two trustees under the will of Charles E. Forbes for four years from the first Monday of January 2014. Accept a motion. Second. Any discussion on this? Uh, this will be the first uh, general election yeah. under our new charter, I believe. That's true. So yeah. it's, uh, it's a very exciting time here in Northampton. It is. I didn't make it sound very exciting, but yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of hard well, you, you to spit all that out and sound pretty. Why, why don't you jazz it up for a second? <laughs> Next time we'll do it with a harmonica break. It wouldn't be that exciting. I thought no one would have stayed for it. <laughs> but you're right. You're absolutely Can't handle right. All the excitement. This is this is the first election under the new charter, and uh, it's reflected in that in in the terms, particularly in the mayor and in the school committee. You'll see. So, um, yeah, we we uh, we seem to be pulling this off. This we're actually making the charter work. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. Any further discussion? Um, uh, this is going to have a roll call too, so it does. No, it doesn't need a roll call. We don't have does. a roll call. It's, it's in order. It's in order. We? Oh, yes, well, it's money. It's, money. it's all money. my uh, all my counselors have informed me that all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? It's money. It carries. That's uh, that's first reading. Good. What's that? Yes, counselor. 
Yes, um, I'd like to make a motion that we could suspend the rule, suspend rule 14 and do two readings on this so right. we can let Wendy go ahead and move on and do what she Second wants day. to do. Third. Motion's been made to suspend rules. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I'll accept a motion for the second reading. Then. So moved. Second it. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please aye. say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. This is an authorization for the mayor to file a petition for special legislation, Ray, the uh, Lilly Library Retirement Exclusion. This is first reading. Uh, the Northampton City Council hereby authorizes the mayor to file with the general court a petition for special legislation in accordance with Amendment Article 2, Chapter 8 of the Massachusetts Constitution as follows. Notwithstanding the provisions of any general or special law to the contrary, the City of Northampton Retirement Board may exclude Charlotte Carver and Marianne Turi, or Turgi, employees of the Lilly Library, an employing unit uh, until uh, uh, an employing unit recently added to the Northampton retirement system for mandatory membership in the retirement system based upon their unique individual circumstances and the likelihood that they will not be eligible for a potential pension benefit. And the mayor is still recognized and can speak to that. <coughs> okay, so this is an interesting story. Um, it sure looks like. So, um, uh, when I got elected, uh, shortly after I got elected and, and met with, um, with the staff at Lilly Library, one of the things that came up in our conversations uh, was a, a sort of an anomalous situation where um, employees of Forbes Library are part of our retirement system um, and uh, employees of Lilly Library were not. Um, and they had asked me to investigate that, which I did. Um, and actually under Mass General Law, uh, uh, even though these are not city departmental libraries, Mass General Law indicates that free public libraries, which these two are, um, in which the city provides uh, more than 50% of the funding, that the employees are uh, eligible to participate in, and actually should be in the, in the city's retirement program. Um, so apparently some past employees of Lilly had petitioned the retirement board, the Northampton Retirement Board, which is an independent body um, and for some reason that had not been followed up on I, I don't really know it was in 1998 I believe is when that happened um, so fast forward to uh, this spring we went before uh, I petitioned on their behalf to the Northampton Retirement Board um, they uh, went ahead and realized that they should indeed include Lilly Library and went ahead and did that um, and then in a case of be careful what you ask for, um, we determined, it then became apparent that two of the long-serving full-time employees, the director, uh, Marianne Tourge, um, and Charlotte Carver, uh, uh, were in a situation where they had been paying into Social Security for the last seven or eight years, and to go now into the retirement system would actually be disadvantageous to them because there's no way that they could buy back those years into the retirement system because they've already paid into Social Security and you can't get the money back, you can't back the money out of Social Security. And um, they won't actually serve long enough uh, to be vested in the Northampton retirement system because you need 10 years to be vested. Um, so, so what they're so now, in order to exempt them from being put into the retirement board uh, system, and, and all future employees would go into the system, but because of their special circumstances, um, you know, had it been available to them when they first started being employed, um, they would have done it, they would have gone into it, this would be a moot point. Um, so in order to do that, it actually requires special legislation, a special legislative exemption, um, from be participating in the in the retirement system, so that's the reason why this takes a a act of the legislature in order to now we've we've corrected an error that has gone on since uh, for a while, uh, but this is one of the sort of side effects of that that we need to correct moving forward. So that's the purpose of petitioning the legislature. Uh, and I would like to send him that boot bill as well. If <laughs> <laughs> uh, Councillor Adams is next, and then Councillor um, So does um, Article 2, Section 8 of the Massachusetts Constitution allow 
the mayor to file directly with the general court as opposed to um, requiring a member of the legislature? Um, you know, the, the practice has been, and what uh, I talked with uh, Representative Cocott about this, um, they like to have a vote of the, uh, of the typical authorizing body in the city before they move forward with these things. So mayor and city council or in a town, they like to have the select board vote on these things. Um, and so that, that was his recommendation to us, and we're just following that protocol. Um, I don't know the specific, I suppose I could request, I, I think actually individual citizens can petition uh, their legislators to file legislation on their behalf, and they certainly can. In this case, because we're essentially, you know, anytime they're asking that one city or, or city employees of one city are exempted from something that all other city employees are under, I think they want it to go through the, the, the authorizing body of government and have a vote on it um, so that there can be no questions about it for the legislator uh, and with his colleagues as well. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Council Department and Council How many years, Mayor, on both of these? Um, So Charlotte since 97, uh, Ms. Ms. Carver, 97, and Marianne Tourget since 2011. Seven. Seven, Seven excuse me, 2007. Seven. Yeah. And again, they've, they've, they've paid into Social Security for all those years, and they can't buy back those years. Um, and so they actually then came to us and said, you know, thank you for doing this for our employees, but we would actually like now to stay where we are. Um, so that's the reason. And I, I, I'm not going to second guess their request, although I'm very confused by it because um, even though they've paid ba they've paid into Social Security for those years, um, they can buy back they can also buy back the time for their city of Northampton. And if you've got, uh, they can't buy back the city of Northampton time. Oh, I am, okay, I, I just know where it's been done in the past, so I might be. Susan, do you want to speak to that? You, you can buy back time, but it's only time that you've worked for a municipality that you weren't paying into Social Security. So you might have been an elected official in another community or something. I just bring up the example of the former director of the Academy of Music mm -hmm. who had 20 or 30 years already been paying into Social Security and then was allowed to buy in and then draw from the city retirement. But again, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to. I sit on the retirement board and the academy is not eligible for membership in. We made an exception for this one person if those, yeah, the, do you remember? The special or, act was never enacted. We vote, this council voted on a special, a similar Act piece of legislation. I don't know that it was ever enacted. Oh, but um, but that was our intent at the time. It was, and it would have required a. Uh, I believe it would have required a buyback. But he wasn't actually eligible to be in the in the in the Northampton retirement system. Um, so I'm not. So that may have been what made the legislation problematic. Okay. All right. It seems too complicated to get into the details here right. tonight. But you're right. This does seem like it's a. Uh, Councilor Freeman Daniels and Councilor Tacey. I, um, I also share uh, confusion over this, and um, I, uh, I'm inclined not to, not to support it. The reason that I'm curious about it is that I wonder what retirement system the city would then provide for these two employees. Would they continue to contribute to Social Security? And that's what the that's what the, the the special law would exempt them from mandatory membership because you are. Um, if you are a city employee, you're traditionally you're required to be part of the, the municipal retirement system. Right, but yeah. would the city then be can be as the employer? Would the security. city then contribute to social security on the half of these two individuals. We are not the employer. Lilly Library is its own employer, just mm -hmm. like Forbes. We're not. We are not the employer of the employees at Forbes, nor are we the employer of the employees at Lilly, which is. 
I think another reason this fell through the cracks over the years, because these employees do not come through our HR department. They are oriented. They are eligible for health insurance by virtue of Mass General Laws saying if you provide more than 50 percent of the support to a free public library, the employees of that library are eligible for health group health insurance and the retirement system. But technically, they are not, they are never and never will be our our employees all right so someone's paying so who who then would they contribute would the employer being the library who receives mostly funds from the city yes lily would be the ones making those and contributions they would contribute to social security yes is that the, that's how the they have is they would opt out of this system and contribute to social security yes, instead they, and they, budge, they budget if you look in the if you look in our budget yeah they budget 14,000 for medicare and social security oh that's what they've been budgeting um uh in the past so and they, forbes has the same and forbes has the same so they, they so these two individuals want to continue to stay on Social Security. Yes. Their employer believes that it's okay for them to stay on Social Security. But Again, the given the circumstances, yeah. Municipality has to. Okay, well, that, that's a little bit of a different story, I, I see, um, that uh, it's possible. And I don't know, did they submit letters? I can't remember if they submitted any letters themselves or emails. Uh, no. Okay. We can certainly try to it, get you some. It is no, my these. my knowledge of the system um, and of my <laughs> my job in the real world um, is uh, contributes to the fact that it is indeed possible that they could suffer a financial um, penalty for uh, enrolling in the in the pension system. Um, although I actually don't think it would be very uh, very much. Everyone has different circumstances, and uh, in the, this transition, then I can I can understand uh, uh, trying to file this petition. Mm -hmm. uh, consultation, then Councilor Carney. Yeah, I've actually <coughs> discussed it with um, with Charlotte, um, and I, I intend to support it. But, um, it does create a hardship for her. Um, I remember, I don't know um, the other person, but uh, I intend to support it. I think that in both cases there. Um, uh, it could be just they're, they're within 10 years of retirement age. And so if they started today in the Northampton retirement system, they wouldn't reach the 10 years needed to be vested in the system to be, right. so they'd be, uh, so it'd be more beneficial for them to continue on their current path of paying into social security, yeah. which is what they've done to date. So I think that's what their concern is about. I, I guess Council the question, I, I, again, the question for me is why they can't buy back. And so, and, um, but just we'll because, research you know, that. We yeah. will research that because I think there'd be an issue of I, I don't know that you're allowed to pay into a municipal system and also the the issue of the Social Security withholding going into the Social Security their Social Security account. I don't, you could cert you could buy back, but you couldn't undo the Social Security piece of it. Um, and Councilor Freeman Daniels may be able to describe that better. Uh, yeah, like I said, this is in the in, in my other. Wearing my other hat, um, there is a there is a provision for other public service provided um, that uh, that allows for buy for buy-in or a buyback provision. Um, but it, each retirement board has their own rules. But the and so this would be a question for the Northampton Retirement Board. But uh, the general sort of the general rule of thumb is that if if um, you were contributing to any other a uh, publicly funded pension system that you become vested in, uh, and in this case, Social Security would be that one, then you would not be able to also buy that time back, um, even if it were public. But we'll, we'll try to clarify that. I know both of these individuals have talked to their uh, yep. retirement board, and they've talked <coughs> to the planning folks about it, and they've, they've requested this, so. Yep. Okay, that's fine. I just want to point out that even if these two, if the legislature fails to approve this, uh, that um, the individuals who contribute to the retirement, Northampton retirement uh, system, if they don't become vested, would be eligible to refund their uh, contributions with interest uh, upon their retirement. True, so right? it's uh, it's the real it's the real problem here would be the uh, lack of years in Social Security 
um, not the um, not the, the failure to vest. And um, you know, given that most people's um, highest earnings are when they are right before they retire, uh, it, Social Security, there may be a, a shortfall that that, uh, that we would subject these employees to if uh, if they were to contribute to the pension system instead of Social Security. Um, this is the first reading, and we'll accept. Uh, we'll so move. I get it. Uh, Specter remarks. And um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? First reading. This is the surplus of seven parking spaces to be used for trash disposal containers for the five year period FY 2014 to FY 2019. <coughs> First reading. So moved. Second. Any further discussion on that? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. You want to read? Yes. yes. Can, we, can we take a roll call on this, please? Yeah, to do a roll on call. Second no, just ma majority reconsideration for a roll call on the first reading. First reading? Okay. Roll call, please. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Councilor Freeman Daniels? Aye. Councilor Bayer? Yes. Councilor Short? Yes. We'll suspend rule 14. All right, motion Second. made and seconded by Adams Tacey. Um, roll call. And, and uh, okay, so Move second we reading. Further discussion. Uh, this is a motion to second. second reading. Thank you. And second. Yep. Second. Okay. The, uh, any further discussion? It's a call for a roll call. Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor White? Yes. Councilor Freeman Daniels? Hi. Councilor Barr? Yes. Councilor Short? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. This is um, an ordinance. This is for uh, parking prohibition and parking prohibition at all times on Bates Street. This is the first reading. This is. Um, be ordained by the City Council of the City of Northampton City Assembled as follows. It's Section 312-102 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Northampton, Massachusetts, be amended so that such section shall read as follows. Uh, parking prohibited at all times, Bates Street, easterly side, from point 188 feet northerly of the Norwatic Rail Trail Central Line to point 334 feet northerly of the Norwatic Rail Trail Central Line. Is there a motion? Move to approve. Second. Second. It. Second. Any discussion on this? Got some, uh, Council Freeman. Briefly, this is for the uh, uh, private school that uh, has installed a, a pickup on Bay Street. And um, as per their um, site plan review, they agreed to uh, make no parking zone. They agreed to actually numerous infrastructure improvements, which you should drive by. It's it's quite nice there. They got benches and a, and a new uh, sidewalk, but also no parking for the for the uh, pull off. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Please. Aye. 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 Ordinance. Roll call. I'm sorry. Yes, it is an ordinance. Good catch. Thank you, Councilor Adams. Adam. Yes. 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 Aye. Yes. 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 Uh, and now the Northampton Center for the Arts Board of Directors. This is uh, upon, <coughs> excuse me, upon the recommendation of Council Rowan Freeman Daniels, uh, an ordinance of the City of Northampton, Massachusetts, providing that the code ordinance of the City of Northampton, Massachusetts, be amended by revising section 22-71 to 22-74 of said code, providing the Northampton Center for the Arts Board of Directors be ordained by the City Council of the City of Northampton in the City Council assembled as follows, that section 22-71 to 22-74 of the code ordinance of the, of the City of Northampton, Massachusetts be amended so that such section shall read as follows. Northampton Center for the Arts Board of Directors delete in its entirety. Um, accept a motion. Move to approve. Second. And discussion. Councilor Freeman Daniels, you were the sponsor. Do you want to speak to it or 
Sure. Sure. No, no. Up to ready to go. <laughs> no, I'm just curious. <laughs> to what to say. Yeah, I'll speak to it. Um, this is uh, this is mostly house cleaning. Um, the uh, I'll pretty much repeat what I said at the ordinance committee where this was reviewed. This is a um, this is a, a really a holdover from 30 years ago when um, the city surplused the uh, Sullivan School and made an arrangement to um, provide uh, basically rent-free space to the Center for the Arts uh, and uh, to, to, to a really a new organization that would be a publicly um, interested organization, the Center for the Arts, that would um, be a space for uh, art, art presentation, shows, and uh, the production of art. And um, the initial uh, laws stayed on the books all this time, even though they really weren't enforced, that the mayor would appoint the board of directors subject to confirmation from the council. And at the time, um, I wasn't, of course, I wasn't uh, really around back then, uh, but uh, I mean, I was around, but Not yeah, around. I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't really, <laughs> wasn't really around. And um, it, 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 makes, it made good sense. Uh, here was uh, surplusing property. We were asking a new organization to assume a, a role that's in the public interest. It makes sense that the that the council and the mayor would have some oversight regarding the board of directors. Um, from the institutional memory of that organization, um, that was followed briefly by Mayor Musanti, uh, and then subsequently not by Mayor Musanti, Mayor Ford, or Mayor Higgins, or Mayor Narkowitz. Uh, the board is now a self-sustaining institution. It's its own not-for-profit, and it, it no longer has the the free space that uh, the city provided for it. It's really an independent entity now, as it has been for over, over 25 years. And uh, this is just cleaning up the, um, the ordinance to reflect that and to show that that, uh, that they're not, that neither the board nor the city council is out of, or the, or the city is out of compliance with our own ordinances. And um, finally, this is not, and I didn't say this at the ordinance committee meeting, this is not to be construed in any way to be uh, a show of non-support uh, or um, abandonment of the Center Northampton Center for the Arts. Uh, I, I, I speak for myself, but I hope I speak for the entire council when I talk, when I uh, acknowledge the tremendous benefit that they have provided to this city, that they continue to want to provide to this city, uh, and that we, um, uh, we gain from their uh, their existence and their uh, and their continued existence, and hopefully, uh, their um, very imminent establishment in in, uh, in a uh, in a building in Ward Three. I understand that the closing for the Arts Trust property is the end of this month. So, uh, there's some house cleaning and some good news. Councilor Tracy. Yeah. I do recognize this also as housekeeping. I, I would ask uh, the council that sponsors it, would he have an objection to two readings on this tonight? I mean, I, that we can also just wait. I mean, if, if unless there's any possible community, uh, I, I do not believe there would be, but it, as just keeping with our general practice, I think like, we should. Yep. I, I think I would prefer that unless it's really yeah. pressing. I would like to not get in the habit of doing two readings, but I, I actually understand it. I don't think there'd be much of a problem with it, but just to, just for us to remember that that is an exception. It's not, yeah. not a tool. And ordinarily do the two readings lightly. I know. No, I know you don't. That's why um, it's, yeah. it's okay. Thank you. Um, any other discussion on this? All those in favor in first reading? Roll call. Aye. Aye. Uh, Aye. Roll call. Sorry. Thank you. This is a roll call. Yes. Yes. Aye. Yes. 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 Vice President is keeping me on my toes. <laughs> See, we uh, this is um, this is upon the recommendation of the Department of Public Works and Transportation and Parking Commission, <clears throat> and this is uh, parking prohibited at all times on Meadow Street. This is first reading. Uh, this is, and I'll just read the prohibitions. This is uh, locations Meadow Street on the north side, 
point eight hundred feet west from Corticelli Street to Spring Street. Move to approve. Second. Any discussion on this? Council Freeman Daniels. This was brought to us from the Department of Public Works uh, at the Transportation Parking Commission. We uh, we're trying to uh, encourage use of the uh, parking lots uh, at the field at the um, uh, gardens and um, also trying to preserve the uh, fledgling trees that are there. Um, the the major downside that we expressed at the parking commission meeting, I think, was the expense of the signs. Uh, they're 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 going to be a lot of them, and uh, we I think that. Um, Councilor Tacey and I uh, believe that uh, it would be nice if we could uh, break with our custom of uh, placing the signs, what is it, 70, 75. 75 feet apart and maybe further apart in order to save some money um, because it, the, the area there is very flat, it's very straight. Uh, it's hard for us to, con to I'm sorry for speaking for you, Councilor, but it's hard for us to believe that uh, a citizen would complain about not being notified about a no parking zone given even if we ex even if the city extended the parking uh, uh, rather the, the the signage um, and it would save it saves money every sign costs money in the city so it would be Is that a, a DPW it's really line? their per it's really their purview but uh, I mean is is the DPW are they required by law for prohibition signs to have certain it's, spacing it's a really a, it's really the it's really best practice given uh, the uh, given I think I think kind of common law understanding of what can constitutes notice uh, and what tickets what you know what a parking ticket may or may not be enforceable I think I think the councilor and I agree that uh, that uh, this is a special circumstance given that it's um, straight flat and uh, and um, pretty easy to see the how many signs did we calculate it 22 20 yeah, the, yeah. there could be fewer we, we believe we'd like to cut it down to like 10 or perhaps those of us on the uh, joint committee with the DPW could bring this <coughs> specific issue up because it is just a policy I think it's a policy yeah. by the DPW and we could bring it up for this unique place and say could you possibly do half the signs or whatever number it seems yeah. thank you thank you well the, the vote of course is simply for the parking restriction yep. so yep. Um, any further discussion on the parking restriction? Everyone understands the the terrain and what we're talking about here. And okay. Also, the expense is about five hundred bucks per sign. Right. Yeah. So, certainly a consideration. So, um, well, this will require a roll call. Yes. Aye. Yes. Aye. Yes. Aye. Yes. Uh, we're up to a tabled motion um, from the last meeting. This is the uh, use and dimensional regulation of central business. Um, do you want me to reread it? No. You, I'll accept a motion then. Yes. Move to amend. Second. All right. Um, discussion, please. Thank you. Uh, uh, Councilor Adams, you want to go first? And sure. This is, I actually voted no on this in first reading and um, I'm going to change my vote and on first reading I was kind of I, I was I was concerned about just the the about this ordinance which would allow for the potential reduction in available commercial space but uh, since since last reading I've discussed it with several members of the business community I don't think there are many but I think there are some who share that anxiety and what I do like about this ordinance is that it provides an opportunity for more residential infill downtown. And I think that that's a laudable goal, and I think that'll contribute to the walkability of downtown. And I think it's sustainable, it's consistent with the sustainable Northampton um, goals. So I'm going to change my vote on this. Thank you. Councilor Spector. Yeah, some of the councilors may know this, but it, it's interesting, and it's just a coincidence that I think it's the Northampton Lodge which has uh, low-income housing, that it's being sold, and the new buyer <clears throat> who wants to do this wants to add a number of units, wants to put retail in front, but wants to add mixed units to this and expand on the units. If we don't pass this, they won't be able to do that. 
It just happened to come up. There's no for those oh, conspiracy conspiracy conspirator theorists in the group. Conspiracy theorists. Conspirator. Thank you. I can't think straight <laughs> right now. So. But I think it's important to do this because in front will be the real the uh, the retail space, but it will allow for exactly for more housing in the back, and they plan to expand the housing if they can. Vote, the motion was for the amendment. Okay, so this is that would be this one with the striking. This is the amendment. This is the amendment. And how's this different? Yeah, this, this is the same. Okay, so this is we're, this is the one we're doing. Okay. The one from the Yes. Daniel's amendment. Now I actually will read it if you'll bear with me. Then, sure. this, is, uh, this is with the amended language: any residential use above the first floor and any residential use located to the rear of otherwise permitted non-residential uses that occupy a space of at least 20 feet deep, and any residential use on a property which does not abut on a public way or a public park. However, not classifying rail trails as public parks maintained by the city and then struck from this is home office occupation and add as added was home businesses are considered residential uses for these purposes and that's the language that we're discussing and voting on so any further discussion Council yeah, just it's just we amended it twice one to include public parks as as also um, for something that you want to have a non-residential uh, space fronting and then the second piece we we asked to be uh, modified from Edloop actually, um, that's the cross off for home office slash occupation. If you recall, that was a few months ago. Yeah. But the idea was that um, that uh, some people might might create their home office on the first floor and thereby call it commercial. And we want to try to avoid that mm -hmm. that gaming element. Right. So this is keeping in in the spirit of the the legislation already established relative to home businesses. Any further discussion? Councilor Tacy. I think it's been kicked around enough and I don't know, uh, I think it is about as good as it's gonna get. Um, so why intend to support this this time? Also, I just wanna say it also, I'll make it quick. It, it adds more opportunities for any potential builder, developers in the roundhouse lot, just gives them more options. Okay, um, this will be a roll call two. Hi. Yes. 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 <clears throat> yes. 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 I just want to give so, a quick thank you to everybody that worked on this. Yeah. Uh, did we, did we, is that the final vote or was that for the amendment? That was the final. That was for the amendment. Actually, that was for the amended language. That was the motion. You're right. So I'll accept the motion for the final vote. Uh, are we right? Is the clerk, is that right? Clerk. We need to take a final vote. Right, because we yeah. tabled it and had the amendment. Right. 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 So the amendment's been approved. Mm -hmm. And now this is the motion for the final vote. So I'll accept the motion. To approve. Second. 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 Okay. <clears throat> um, any further discussion? Roll call, please, Council Mary. Yes. Councilor Schwartz? Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Tracy? Yes. Yes. Councilor Yes. Yes. Aye. This is in second reading. This is to merge the historic district commission into the historical commission as amended. Move to approve second reading. Second. Mo motions are made and seconded. Any discussion? Any further discussion on this? No. Okay. Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Aye. Yes. It's 9.30, and look where we are on the agenda. Now, I have, I have no updates. Uh, is there any request for information? Okay. Councilor Freeman Daniels? Just a, from the committee, we're still looking for a representative from the business community of downtown Northampton on the parking committee. Okay. Please note that downtown businesses want to participate. You, lost a, you recently lost a member who was the... Uh, business representative on the committee. So. 
Um, any new business? I'll accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. Adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.